In this film, we will attempt to help you get oriented on the brain, uh, on the whole brain, and also to be able to identify a number of the gyri and sulci that you're asked to be able to identify in this course. Now, as we look at this specimen, uh, we can see that there is a very prominent lateral fissure. And the lateral fissure is very consistent from brain to brain and from side to side. So you can always find that starting back here in the middle of the brain and going towards the hilus or opening of the lateral fissure. And this is separating the temporal lobe below it from the frontal lobe and to some degree from the parietal lobe. Now as we uh, proceed then after the lateral fissure, we want to be able to identify the uh, gyri and the sulci on the frontal pole. Now the, the frontal pole is going to sit in the anterior cranial faucet, whereas the temporal pole is going to sit in the middle cranial fossa, that is, directly behind the eye. The uh, frontal lobe, then, will have three relatively horizontal gyri. The first one we'll identify here close to the midline would be the superior frontal gyrus, and we have a pretty distinctive superior frontal sulcus on this particular specimen. After you've identified the superior frontal sulcus and gyrus, then you pick out the inferior frontal gyrus. And in this brain we have a pretty uh, substantial continuous inferior frontal sulcus. Now in between that inferior gyrus and the superior gyrus would be a much broader middle frontal gyrus. The middle frontal gyrus is highly variable from brain to brain and even side to side in the same specimen. So finding the superior gyrus first, the inferior frontal gyrus second, then you can assign the remainder of that frontal lobe, that prefrontal cortex, to the middle frontal gyrus. You will be hearing a great deal more about the functional areas and interconnections of the prefrontal cortex as the studies come out month after month using uh, functional MRI and sophisticated um, uh, testing strategies. Now, you may have noted that the superior frontal gyrus is kind of horizontal, as is the middle, as is the inferior, and we can follow those back until we find a pair of gyri that are much more vertical. And in this specimen then, those two gyri will be the precentral gyrus and the postcentral gyrus, around the central sulcus. Now the central sulcus then is separating the, the frontal lobe in front of it from parietal lobe behind. And we'll see that the central sulcus almost reaches the midline of the brain. And that's the usual. It does not go a long ways over the medial surface. Now, if we uh, go back to the inferior frontal gyrus, we identify three different components of this gyrus. An opercular portion, sort of in the lips of the lateral fissure, a triangular portion, which is almost triangular in this particular specimen, and then an orbital portion, and the orbital portion is going to lead us to the ventral surface of the frontal lobe 
where we will see the orbital gyri. The orbital gyri then are sitting above the eye on the bony orbit. And these gyri are quite variable in their presentation. And so the only gyrus that we identify in this course is the one next to the midline that's quite straight. We can see it on both sides in this specimen. And that is the gyrus rectus, or the straight gyrus. This structure that runs in the sulcus next to the gyrus rectus is the olfactory tract and the olfactory bulb, the first of the cranial nerve tracts that we will be identifying. Now I'm going to turn the brain back so that we can go back to looking at the temporal lobe. And if we identified superior middle and inferior frontal gyri, it turns out we can also identify superior, middle, and inferior temporal gyri. So you can see here then this will be the superior temporal sulcus. It's sort of interrupted here. We have to be a little flexible in our identification of these structures. Middle temporal gyrus and the inferior temporal gyrus, leading us towards the temporal pole. Now if I turn to the ventral surface of the temporal lobe, this was what we identified as inferior temporal gyrus. Most of the remainder of this we will call the occipitotemporal gyrus. So it's quite a long one. It again is quite different in its presentation from brain to brain. But we're particularly interested in the gyrus next to the occipitotemporal, the gyrus we can see at the medial edge of the temporal lobe is the parahippocampal gyrus. The parahippocampal gyrus will serve as the entry zone, it's a relay zone, for most of the sensory information that will be processed into a hidden gyrus we cannot see, which will be the hippocampus. You only see the hippocampus when we have cut sections of the brain. Now, the parahippocampal gyrus comes anteriorly and then hooks back. There's a little eminence here, and that is the uncus. The uncus overlies some amygdaloid nuclei, part of the limbic system. Okay, so those are the structures on the temporal lobe. And that brings us next then to the parietal lobe behind the central sulcus. We have the postcentral gyrus, which functions in somatosensory uh, function and relay and processing. And behind that we'll have the parietal lobe. Now, the lateral fissure typically rises into the parietal lobe. And surrounding that is the supramarginal gyrus. Now, not so consistently, the superior temporal sulcus comes up behind that and sometimes invades the angular gyrus behind that. The supramarginal and angular gyrus make up the inferior parietal lobule. And here we have, if I turn this a little bit, the intraparietal sulcus. So that inferior parietal lobule was below, and the superior parietal lobule will be above that. Now it's, it's difficult and rather arbitrary where we separate 
the occipital lobe from temporal and parietal lobes. Here we can see a preoccipital notch. It's more or less evident from brain to brain. And if we draw an arbitrary line across the lateral surface to what you cannot yet see but is the parietal occipital fissure, then the parietal lobe is in front of that and the occipital lobe is behind it. And there's the occipital pole, usually a bit more pointed in its design than is the frontal lobe, which is much more rounded in its design. Now we've identified uh, a number of gyri and regions in the parietal lobe, but from the lateral surface, the occipital lobe is quite variable, and we do not identify any of these as specific gyri that you're required to pick up. This is all uh, area of the brain that is doing higher order processing of our visual function. Now I would like to demonstrate uh, one other thing uh, with this brain that's a whole brain by putting my fingers in the lateral fissures and pulling them as far back towards the parietal lobe as I can, I find that the the uh, lateral fissure on the left hemisphere comes back slightly further than the lateral fissure on the right hemisphere. And that's fairly typical of the fissures as they uh, present in the normal human brain. It's a statistical uh, thing that the left hemisphere will come back more frequently than the right. Now I'm going to turn this towards the, the left hemisphere to point out a, f a few other things. Here are those three horizontal frontal gyri, superior, middle, and inferior. And it comes to these two vertical gyri. So this is to remind me and to remind you that the sulci are not consistent even from side to side. On this specimen, the precentral gyrus was a continuous gyrus without interruption by sulci. In this side of the brain, there are a couple, at least, interruptions of the precentral gyrus. So you have to maintain some flexibility in how you uh, go about identifying these structures. Now, one more thing I wish to identify here on this side, and which side of the brain is this? We've identified temporal pole, frontal pole. Here we're looking at the left hemisphere. The left hemisphere is our language dominant hemisphere. So we would expect on the inferior frontal gyrus to find Broca's area. On the superior temporal gyrus, we would find Wernicke's area, also involved with language, but with understanding language, whereas Broca's is, has to do with production. Now as I separate the lateral fissure we can see in the depths of the lateral fissure some additional gyri. These are the gyri of the insula. And coming from the insula and out towards the superior temporal gyrus are some transverse gyri. These are the transverse gyri which are the uh, first level of, of uh, endings in the cortex for auditory signals.